So in this part, we're gonna look at installing the cross-site request forgery protection package with Slim. And we're gonna take a look at how this traditionally works. And hopefully this will convince you otherwise that you want to move on to the next part and make this a little bit easier. So uh, the first thing we need to do is just head over to the uh, GitHub page for this. I'll leave a link in the course links as always for this. And we're just gonna go ahead and pull in the package, of course, using Composer. So let's do this first. And uh, that should download pretty quickly. There we go. And this is pretty much how we use it. So uh, like I said in the introduction, we can either bind this onto all routes. So this will basically add middleware. What I would actually suggest you do is take a look through this guard class just to kind of familiarize yourself with it. And we can do that now actually, if we just come over to this. This is essentially just middleware that's uh, bound to either all routes or the routes that you uh, provide. Uh, and you can see here that we've got our basic constructor uh, passing in storage so you can change around your storage and your, or your prefix if you want uh, and all that kind of stuff. And we have these methods like get token key name or name key and get token value key. And basically we need to manually extract these out and then insert them. Now the reason it works like this, and I completely understand this, is that you may wish to change around your name key and your value key and then the actual name and value. So this makes things a lot more flexible and honestly, this is absolutely fine. But doing this and passing this down to every view gets very annoying. So let's first of all, just go ahead and grab this uh, code here. We're gonna attach this to our container so we can do this anywhere. And all this is doing is just binding on cross-site request forgery using a new instance of that guard class that we've just looked at. It's as simple as that, same as what we did with our views. So you would take this and you would bind it somewhere before your roots and after you've defined this out in your container. So something like app add and then using your container, you would just uh, grab that out of the container. And this would add to all routes. So if you were to post something through to another route, then this would uh, have protection enabled immediately. So really what we want to do is very quickly create a form over here and post it through to a new route. So we'll do that. We'll take a look at that it fails because we have this on here, but we're not including that hidden input. And then we'll go ahead and uh, move over to the next part. So over in home, let's just create a really basic form, kind of like something that we would want to uh, protect with cross-site request forgery. Of course, it's a good practice to protect everything with cross-site request forgery. So it's always a good idea to do this. So what I'm gonna do is actually just create a layout. If you are new to Twig, this will uh, kind of help you out uh, with how this works. We're gonna extend a base layout. So I'm gonna call this app.twig. And into here, I'm just gonna create a rough document layout like so. So we're just gonna call this cross-site request forgery. And inside of here, we want to basically uh, define out a block where anything will be inserted. So we're gonna call this block content and then we immediately end the block just here. So we're gonna say end block. And now what we can do is over on our home, we can extend this and place whatever we want in here. So not necessary really, but it's good to uh, go through these things. So we're going to extend that layout. So layout slash app dot twig. And then down here, we define out that block that we want to insert and that's called content. So down here, we end the block and we just place anything inside of here that we need. So let's go ahead and do that now. So the form then is gonna have an action of uh, a path. So we're gonna actually define this out as a path in a moment. So we need to give our post route a name and uh, the method is obviously gonna be post. Now in here, I'm just gonna have a button with a type of submit, and this is gonna be some kind of subscription upgrade or cancellation or something like that. So over in index, let's just create a new route. This is going to upgrade a subscription, and we're just gonna say slash upgrade, and in here, we'll just create a closure, and we'll go ahead and return subscription upgraded, just to make things a little bit easier. And this should be just enough to see that this works. So we need to set a name for this. So if we just set a name on this particular route to upgrade, what we can now do, and this kind of leads us into what we're gonna be doing is use a, a kind of helper function. So we can say path four and then just give the name. And this is exactly the kind of thing that we're gonna be creating to make the cross site request for tree field insertion a lot easier. So now that we have this then, what we should have is a button that goes through if we actually enable sessions. So by default, 
cross-site request for Drew Middleware for Slim. It released this package will use Session, so that's the default storage. And again, we can uh, check that by coming over to the guard just here. And if we come down, we can see that the storage here, by default, if it's not been defined out, we'll use sessions. So all we need to do in this case then is over in index.php or somewhere in a bootstrap file, start sessions within PHP. That's all we need to do. So now we have this button, I click it, we get a failed cross-site request forgery check because we're not including them inputs. So let's do that really now and completely bore ourselves with how annoying this is by default. And then we'll go ahead and fix this up in the next part. So over in home then we need these two hidden inputs. So let's create these now. And we're going to have a name and a value for each of these, but we need to pass these through to our view because uh, we actually have the name and the value contained as we've already seen within that guard class, we have their methods. So what we would have to do then, and I'm just gonna copy this over from here, is do all of this. So we just basically take all of this, paste it in there, and then we have to send this through to our view. So we can do this now and see how it looks. So name key, we're gonna to set to name key. We're gonna have a value key. And again, change all this over and a name and a value. So name is name and value is value. Now there's a couple of problems with this. The first one is that, do we really want to be doing this every single time we are creating a route that potentially needs cross-site request for true protection? Of course we don't. The other problem is we, these are kind of generic names, so we're gonna to have to kind of prefix them anyway, which kind of avoids the point of having to pull out our name key because then we have to, again, create a convention to actually pass these through to our view. It's more to think about, and we may want to, again, change the name from cross-site request forgery name key to something else in the future. Really, this is just a headache. Now, let's go ahead and implement this and we'll take a look. So in here, we have our name key. So let's go ahead and say name key, and then this is the name value. And I think we just call that value. Oh no, sorry, this is the name, of course. And then we have, even this is confusing, to be honest. And then we have value key, and then we have the value, like so. So now if we just go over here, uh, we need to very quickly fix this up, because what happens is when we add this uh, middleware in, it will modify our request, because obviously this is middleware, and then we'll have access to this attribute in here. So it's actually a, you know, a little bit of a challenge to get this working any better than it does here, but we of course are gonna look at it in the next video. So we have our update button, we click it and it works, brilliant. But we're left with the problem that this is a complete and utter mess. We really need to make this a lot easier. And ideally we don't wanna to have to do any of this at all. And we want to be able to not have to define these inputs out manually for every single form we create. So let's jump over to the last part and implement this and finish it up.